first speaker. <laughs> it's uh, going to be Jason Ward. And uh, Jerry Skipper's the normal Amsoil guy, uh, the synthetic land that I sell. Uh, he's at headquarters of Amsoil today with a tour of the plant. So he's uh, kind of having fun today. And uh, the rest Jason Ward has come up today with his dad. Sorry. 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 To keep him straight, I'm sure. But uh, Jason's going to talk to us a lot about these uh, synthetic lubricants, a lot of stuff that I don't have. So I'm going to sit down and uh, kind of watch him too. Thanks again for coming. Jason. Yes, sir. Appreciate everybody being here this morning. Uh, like you said, we get close to summertime, things are heating up. One thing a lot of people don't realize the oil on a vehicle actually does more cooling than the antifreeze. It is in more contact with the parts that generate the most heat. Um, oil would be considered the blood of an engine. You know, just like we have kidneys, cars have filters. The only way to do this is to change oil. We don't change oil. In ourselves, we have to change oil in our vehicles. Uh, keeping your oil clean will give you more out of your investment in your vehicle. And that's what buying a vehicle is. It's an investment. Uh, nowadays, a car average is anywhere from twenty-five to $40,000. Not all of us can afford to go out and buy one every two years. <laughs> so the more I make and the longer I keep that car going, the more I'm getting my money's worth out of the investment. Um, Amsoil, as far as I'm concerned, is the best lubricant producer in the United States. I second that. <laughs> Good stuff. My father and I got to know Amsoil. We are racers. We were down around Charleston, a little place called Somerville, and we were having problems with a motor running warm. You know, generally 280, 290, you're starting to get up there to the to the uh, temperature of the oil breaking down and causing problems. And uh, this gentleman introduced us to the air filters to start out with, but then he talked us about the oil. Well, we automatically dropped 30 degrees on the oil just by changing it. That's all we did. We dropped the oil plug, changed the filter and the oil in it, and it dropped 30 degrees. So I had $250 in equipment on the car that I no longer needed. As things went on when we started using the gear oil, we dropped almost 40 points a gear. Um, when you do stuff like that as a racer, it only affects me as if I can drop 40 points in my race car, what's it going to do in the rear end of my pickup truck right here as far as fuel mileage? I, most people don't know when God's truck got the Hemi in it, it averages 14, 17 miles per gallon. By cha just changing the gear oil, uh, up two miles per gallon. It's a better lubricant, the rear end runs better, less friction, thus the motor doesn't have to turn as far and as hard to make the wheels turn. Amsoil, I'm guessing what, the last 10 years, have come out with the longer intervals for changing oil. And everyone knows Nowadays, everyone's thinking, what can we do to help save our resources? And with today's economy, what can I do to save money? Hands Oil has come out with three different oils. They have their OE oil. I don't have a bottle. Don't I have, have a bottle. OE oil, I don't stop. Okay. It's the, the lowest of the three. It's, a, it's the lowest grade that, that Hands Oil makes for extended intervals. Uh, it is for your standard interval for your car which nowadays is about 5,000 miles but it but instead of <coughs> excuse me conventional motor oil 
it gives you more wear protection, it gives you less friction, which helps with the mileage. And a lot of people don't realize motor oil has a cleansing agent in it. Thus, it cleans better. If your motor is cleaner, it doesn't have to work as hard. Their next oil is their XL line. This is a 5-core bottle. It is for 15,000 miles. 10 to 15. Alright. That gives you three oil changes. My father-in-law, I love him to death, but he is going to research something <laughs> and find, nitpick everything you do. I've got him on the signature series, which is 25,000 miles. One year or 25,000 miles. He's got a Cadillac Escalade. He lives in Atlanta. It costs anywhere from 80 to 100 bucks in Atlanta to get your oil changed in that Cadillac. All right. It was actually the first time he went and had it changed at the Cadillac dealer. It cost him 150 bucks. <laughs> he liked he liked to have a fit. We were talking about this old. He done his research, this and that, and the other. And I told him, I said, Paul, I said, let's change it over. I said, let's change it over to the XL first. That way, it'll help clean them up. He goes, we'll go 15,000 miles. We did that. And he noticed his gas mileage went up. He noticed the temperature on that on the car, on his truck didn't. He's got gauges in that escalator. It didn't run up there quite as much. And he, he liked the idea he didn't have to sit in a place and wait as much to have his oil changed. Well, I changed him over to the 25 pounds. Now he changes his oil once a year. And it's around Thanksgiving every year. <laughs> and I generally do it for him. <laughs> Know what her, what her son in law is for. <laughs> but he likes the idea, he's not having to spend 30 minutes to an hour sitting in a place. Five times a year, 25,000 miles, five times a year, 30 minutes to an hour. Okay? At an hour, that's five hours of your life you could be doing something else with. Not counting, traveling to and from your dealer. Alright, two. <coughs> it cost him about for his truck, it's got a large capacity, I think it's seven quarters. It cost him about $80. 80 one time a year, or 80 five times a year. So look at the money you're saving. On top of that, my father-in-law is very, I call it green. He recycles, he does this, he does that. Hems oil is fully synthetic. That means all the products in here are man-made. Right. That means that we're not using our natural resources as much as Motor One, Avalon, and all this other stuff. Thus, we're not using our natural resources, our oil. It's all made. In today's economy, all it takes is one person realizing how much they a lot of people don't think about how much they change their oil. And it, all it takes is one person to sit down and truly think about it. I can spend eighty dollars one time a year. Eighty dollars, five times a year, and what my father-in-law has done is the money he saved on changing oil. He's actually putting that up, and they use it on their vacations to the beach every year, and it allows them. Well, matter of fact, right now they're in Maryland. Uh, he's a he's a retired pastor, so they're in Maryland at a conference. Well. He actually took the money he saved in changing oil and drove up there in his 
Cadillac Escalade. And he's getting better gas mileage than he was before. He actually allowed me to put the same stuff in my mother-in-law's Toyota Camry. She hers once a year. Um, my brother-in-law had a Chevrolet 2500 pickup truck. He hasn't got to the 25,000 yet, but he is on the 15. And he's, he's getting there. He, he's getting there. He, he's realized that the hour and a half it takes him to change his oil is an hour and a half he can be watching NFL football. <laughs> That's he can relate to. <laughs> we as a society need to look at what we can do for our environment plus how we can help our own economy, our personal economy. Because every penny I keep in my pocket is a penny I get. I've got a seven-year-old got an 18 year old college so the money I save by using these products is money I get to put into their education and that's what we're doing my wife and I we put it into their education and by teaching my sons at a young age like my father did it's allowing them to understand any year any year adds up to a dollar down the road I want to thank Todd for inviting me over here today. And uh, if there's any questions, we've got brochures. And we would be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, what the 1030, um, I mean, I'll um, make it up my car. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I had a situation where I got about 150,000 miles fall of 208. But anyway, um, I was driving home one day and then uh, all of a sudden it started knocking. I stopped. I got home, but anyway, plug and uh, um, the phone started seeking. Yeah. Uh, it was a plug or something, not yes. broke a plug or something. So I did do the best we can. He was able enough to say it was enough damage, but anyway, Plugged it or something or whatever it is, but they put put new plugs and everything back in it, so it's running now. But I'm the one, and my husband here yeah, let me go for three thousand miles with the chain go, and he said I wasn't using it the right. Or so he went back to cash for I think it was ten thirty. Viscosity on oil. That is what you're talking about. Ten thirty. It is basically a 10 weight oil with the properties of a 30 weight oil. Right. Um, as vehicles get old, older, get more miles on them, I've gotten to where I generally step up. Like from a, most cars start out nowadays with a 5W30. Right. Most common weight, 5W30. Yeah, 530. All right. You got how many miles on your car? I'd step up to a 10W30. Because as the engine wears, your clearances get bigger. Uh -huh. Well, you need something in there to help take up that difference. And a little thicker oil will help take up that difference. Uh -huh. and that's all there is to it. Uh -huh. My wife's car, Lord help, she's had it a year and got 7,000 miles on it. How many? Seven. <laughs> she puts anywhere from 50 to 70,000 miles a year. She's a, she is a... Uh, case manager, nurse. Uh, she'll be in Florence today. She'll be in Charleston tomorrow. Um, her starts out with a 0 30 on it both way. Okay. Uh, when it gets to 100,000 miles, I will naturally bump it up to a 5 30. So you suggest that I should go to what now? Just either a 10 W 30 or a 20 W 50. All it is is a little thicker oil, uh -huh. which the, it flows the, better hot. Yes, it, it'll flow better at a hot temperature, uh -huh. but it'll take up the the, <coughs> the wear, the bearings, and the cylinder bores, ring, and the rings, and all that. I try to change it every three months, but it just keeps. Every three thousand miles. Mm -hmm. 
you change it every 3,000 miles. How many, how many miles you put on a vehicle in a year? Okay. Okay. The average person puts anywhere from 20 to 25,000 miles on a vehicle. You're changing every 3,000 miles. To make things easier, we'll just say you put 21. All right. That's seven oil changes in a year. Okay. For the average do-it-yourself, okay, you're looking at 30 to 35 dollars to go to Walmart buy five quarts of oil and oil. Okay. What kind of car you got? Uh, Ford Fusion. Ford Fusion. Five quarts in a filter? Yes, and it's going to call for five quarts. Okay. Five quarts in a filter for Anzol for the signature series. Yeah, that's so Yeah. You're looking at about $75? No, more than that. I mean, for the, just the product? Just the product. Products, uh, about 85. Okay, 85 bucks. All right, if you go to Walmart, you're going to spend $35 seven times. That's 210 bucks. Easy math. Yeah. Okay. One time, you spend, we'll say, nine bucks. Total. 210, 90. And you don't have to sit in here or wait for somebody to change your order. Okay. The biggest thing we found out when you go to these extended oil changes, you've got to check your oil. Yes. Yes. One thing, Amazon oil cleans better than anything you'll ever find. They can take the motor out there and park, put it in the scrubber. <laughs> but not long. But besides being the best coolant, but as it cleans, that stuff that it cleans out ends up in your oil filter. And the first time you put that oil in there, it is much better for you to go half the distance and have the oil filter change. Because you take those contaminants out of circulation. And then when the change oil filter that time, then you go to your regular 50,000 miles or how far you're going, and then you change the filter at a regular time, then you only have to change it once. But I can say, I have seen, I have personally, See motors that you would not believe. I know spending top seat to take the valve cover off. It's got that much gunk sitting on top of the valve covers and everywhere else. And that's just like a maintenance, I'm going to call it. Or neglect is a good word. Neglect or maintenance. They just don't change just the oil. Just not changing the oil. It's, it's and this. I, and you can, this. Yeah. You can Black. take. Now, I know this sounds crazy. You can take. Five quarts oil and oil filler, and you can put it in that motor that's got that gunk on it. And if you keep changing, it will eventually take every bit of it out of it. But that's an awful lot of a big chance to take. Because sometimes when you put it in there, it breaks stuff loose that you don't want loose. Contaminants and stuff that won't go through the oil screen, won't go into the oil filler, so they float around in your paint. But most vehicles, even at your mileage, I got a O2 Cadillac, I got a 215,000 miles on mine. And like I say, it, it's for regularity, one time a year, not like. But, uh, and I don't usually put 25,000 miles on my car in a year's time. But if you take my car and the two trucks and all, yeah, I put over 25,000 miles on. But the biggest thing is, if it says 10,000 miles, you go to the 10,000 mile mark, you get it changed. You go to 15,000, or you go to 25,000 miles. Oil never stops lubricating. Oil just gets dirty. That's why you change the filter. A lot of people used to say, well, I changed oil, but I didn't change the filter. Well, what the worst thing you do? If I'm going to do anything, I'm going to change the filter, not the oil. Because the oil filter's will help. Take the contaminants out of it to where it's different to do his job. And, uh, not only do we have the automobile products up here showing you, but Elgo makes the best two cycle oil in the world. I and mean, it's a proven fact. I mean you don't you don't realize right here that we don't have snowmobiles. But we got boats. We got plenty of them. And you can use their products in your marine stuff. And in your weed eater, 
chainsaw. Chainsaw? And I made my dad a firm believer in that. He's dead and gone now, but he bought him. He thought he was going to save money. He bought him a chainsaw and uh, got his two sons and grandchildren to help him cut wood every fall so he could burn it in his stove. So he didn't have to pay S-E-N-G to heat up his house. <laughs> you know, but we had trouble with his chainsaw. You could go out and crank it up and cook, you run out of gas. You run out of gas, then you caught the devil getting that sucker frank. And I find I said, Daddy, I'm gonna meet you up a can of gas. I just want you to use this gas, nothing else. And let's see how much difference it is. I did it, he put it in there, we went out, we cut wood all day long. Every time you pull the string, it cracked. He said, Well, I don't need no plugs, and I said, No, you're burning. And I said, Do you notice it's not smoking anymore? He done that, and to the day he died, that's all he run, his weed eater and his uh, chainsaw. But it wasn't, I got to go somewhere to find it, it's, uh, bring me two bottles of Amazon, please. You know, and it was never, uh, how much do I owe you, it was thank you very much. But I love it. Stuff like that makes you feel good because you're actually doing some good for somebody else. Mm -hmm. They're your parents, but yeah. You know, you do it far because you want them to live better. Just like you were doing. But besides the two cycle oil, they make some of the best spray oil, metal protector, they call it. Best lubricant for door hinges on your car or in your house. And, all, and I don't know about Todd here, but when my son and I had us our business going, when we done a lube oil filter for you, we literally lubed all the door hinges in your car and the trunk hinges. And you would really be surprised how many people had never seen that done on their automobile. <laughs> and it only takes two or three minutes to do it, you know what I mean? You just take a can of spray and you open the door and you spray it on the two hinges and all. And I know all of us have closed the door and we heard that plug and that squeak. And it's just, and Something I've always had a thing about. You know, I used to use WD Ford, we use metal detector now. But get my kids go out there and squirt my stuff, I can stand that. Go reach for the door and go close it. They don't want to close it because this thing's kind of stuck. But uh, they do make the best lubricants on the, for us in the world. We have proven that it works. I run a race motor one time, two laps, with no oil pressure. And all we ended up doing was putting the new oil pump shaft in it. And I was definitely hooked on that stuff. Because usually, you run, you, usually if the oil light comes on, it's too late already. Oh, because we turn so many RPMs. But it, it really surprised me. And a fellow in Charleston, Mr. David Carr, got me started on this stuff. And I've been on it now for 30 years. Usually. This and that and the other. And I mean, you can take the brochures, you can read that stuff, you can get on whole mine. That's the best place to find it's on mine. And go through the computer. And, I mean, if you got something you wondered about, it'll be on mine. And you can find it, research it, and make your own opinions of it. That's all you can do, folks. I mean, we've got regular motor oil, we've got antifreeze, we've got uh, slightly used motor oil, we've got gear oil. You know, I mean, there's no oil product that we don't make, basically. Right. A lot of people don't realize. Oh, okay. So it's not only oil. No, oh, no. Air filters, oil filters, oh, wow. all kinds they, of they, transmission fluid. Yes, yeah. yes. Gear oil. We can we can service your car from bumper to bumper. Uh huh. Oh. A lot of people don't realize in the automotive industry, the racing industry motorcycles. There is an oil inside your shops. We even have an oil friend that's going to shop there. And nowadays, with shops being as difficult as they are, everybody wanting a little something different, we rebuild our own. So I can go and take my shops, and instead of paying somebody to service them or rebuild them, I do it right there at my dad's house in our shop. Or I can do it in a trailer, in a restaurant. 
changed it as I went. One thing I like about Amazon, if the dealer I want to use doesn't carry the Amazon product, I get a computer, I get a phone, call my representative, whatever, say I want five quarts of oil and an oil phone. Three days later, it's generally sitting on my doorstep. Call Mr. Skipper. Ma'am, I got to change my oil. I don't have time to wait on it. I've done that, and he brings me oil. <laughs> I, 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 I have done it. I've had, I've had people literally come up to me. Jason, I get ready to go on vacation. I need to change my oil. We're leaving tomorrow. Let me see what I can do. I call Skip. Go pick up the oil, the oil filter. Call the man up, say come get it, or I'll meet you somewhere. Yeah. M's oil, to me, you can't get any better. That's why when Todd asked me the other day, he said, when do you want to do your thing? I said, well, M's oil's the best. I might as well go first. It's hard to follow the best. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be first. <laughs> One other thing that a lot of people don't realize is that in this product, you can become a dealer yourself if you would like to be, or you can become what we call a consumer. Preferred you, customer. Preferred customer. Okay, now, we don't have it up here. They make gear oil in two types, a regular one for an automobile and a heavy duty for truck and racing applications. We got some customers of ours that own trucks I'm talking about fleets of trucks. When we first got them on it, how we got them on it, we got them to change the differential oil in the truck when it was new. And go back with the Amsoil and put the Amsoil in the hubs too on the trailers. Well, the first time the man done it, he wasn't too thrilled about it. He said it's gonna cost you about the same. He could go a little bit longer than the next time before he had to do it again. Two months later he called me and said, Well, I done saved the money on the oil I bought from you. I said, what do you mean you saved money? He said, well, the trucks are getting a mile to a mile and a half more to, to the gallon on diesel fuel than they were getting before. He said, so I, in too much time, I'm going to save for that, that oil cost. That's where you make your savings. That's where you, that's where you get the value out of the Exactly. Product. Because they lubricate so well, it's less friction for your car to go down the road. Right. So you burn less gas. That, make sure you got your air pressure up right on the tires. A lot of people don't realize that, but that that kills kills a lot of stuff <laughs> when you let the air pressure down on the tires, except when you have to. But you know, yes, ma'am. Um, is it the same for your transmission oil? Do do the, do your transmission oil needs to be changed too? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. If you'll read your manual mm -hmm. on your cars, <coughs> some the mileage differs. So right there. 70,000 miles for a change. Oh, so I think it's time for me to get <laughs> Believe it or not, I change it as often. No, but you do change it. But you do change it. Uh -huh. You change it. Why? Most vehicles have a filter in them. Uh, transmissions have a filter in them. Uh -huh. um, it's not as accessible as an oil filter, um, but that's still part of routine maintenance on a vehicle. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that. Differential fluid has to be changed X number of miles. If it's not a front wheel drive. If it's front wheel drive, usually your transmission fluid also does your differential. Yes. So when like you change it to Amsoil, you're getting two for the price of one. Right. Oh, okay. She had a very good question. She asked, what is differential fluid? It's a very good question. Differential is like a pickup truck, like the, the Dodge right here. There's an axle on the rear of that truck. It's rear wheel drive. So there's an axle between the two rear tires that has an oil bath in it. And as the drive shaft hooks to it and makes it turn, there's those parts need to be lubricated. Okay. That's that fluid that a lot of people forget about if you drive a Tahoe, uh, Chevrolet Tahoe. There's a rear end in the back of that vehicle. Uh, a two wheel drive, I mean a Chevy uh, out there doesn't have a one. rear wheel drive or a four wheel drive vehicle has differentials to some people call them areas. Right. And to those 
The ring gear pinion is the life of the moment, life of the, the differential. Expensive parts. Yes. Not only are you going to pay for the parts, you're generally going to pay double for the labor. Yeah, wow. Very expensive. Very expensive to go into. That's why he said he's saying a motor costs five thousand dollars nowadays. Transmission's almost half. Sometimes. Um, my dad and I, our race engines are anywhere from ten to fifty thousand dollars, depending on which one we're we're running. My what I call my super motor, what I run most of the time, costs fifty thousand dollars. Okay. No, so I go round and round. Except oh, I do dirt. Oh, I do dirt racing. Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. All right. I've got fifty thousand dollars stuck in the engine of my vehicle. That's more than what most people pay in a pay for a car, mm -hmm. the whole car. Um, my dad and I have worked with people and being crew chiefs and big crews for, for people with access to NASCAR. We have had literally truckloads of petroleum oil given to us as part of the sponsorship with NASCAR. They give you champion spark plugs, Unicap 76 oil, and well now it will be Sunoco fuel. Those three. Just give it to you. And after I show my drivers, my crew chiefs, my car owners at the time. The difference between you and Al and Amazon, they would literally put the stuff in the corner. And use the Amazon. They give it away what they've done. Yeah. Most of them did. Yeah. Or use it in their personal vehicle instead of the other. But it's just it's hard to explain until you get into it yourself and really look into it how much difference it makes. And most of the products you see on that table are mildly greater. A lot of people don't know that. Because it's a man-made element made from an ester, which they use different things. But uh, the two-cycle oil, where somebody with a petroleum oil cranks up their boat motor and it leaves the oil slip out there on the water or whatever, You'll never see that damn door because it, it's gone. It just goes away. And all. But the transmission, as you were saying, if, if you've got front wheel drive, which that's most of the vehicles today, when you get to 50,000 miles, you should change the transmission fluid and filter. But not only will it prolong the life, it'll give you a lot better gas mileage, too. Even if you change it back with the trolling product, it'll give you better gas mileage. Because you're taking that part of the friction out of, of going forward down. And, all. and at 50,000 miles, you change it. You put air oil in it, you ain't going to change it again for about another 75,000 miles. So most of the time, the vehicle's done gone to somebody else. We got to change it. Yeah. Unless you're like me, just like to yes, hold on to it. I have, my car's 20 years old. Almost 200,000 miles. Okay. What would you recommend? Anson product has the oil. Has the oil? Yeah. What kind of car? Can you even use it? Oh, yes. A Nissan Maxima. Okay. Nissan, okay. It's a good car. First thing I would do, I would get the XL mm -hmm. or, first of all, are you running regular oil or synthetic in the car? Who changes your oil? My mechanic. Guy. <laughs> in Georgetown? I don't what is he charging for an oil change? Well, the last time I had changed, I had work done on the car, so he told me that. So yeah. he didn't break out. I know he changed it, but he didn't probably, break out. He's much. probably just putting it in like Walmart regular. Yeah, I don't think he did okay. anything. If it was me, mm -hmm. I would buy the OE. Okay. And I would buy. You use just a your standard filter, the OE, change the car over to some depth, run it, whatever, three to five thousand miles, whatever the manufacturer says. 
Next, I would buy the XL. In other words, a couple of oil changes of the stepper oil. Oh, yeah, I think this is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah. A couple of oil changes of the OE oil so that when you drain it out, all the conventional oil is out. The conventional oil we want out of the boat. That conventional oil was pumped out of the ground somewhere at some time in its life. This was not. So, so I need to get it out of the engine. Right, because it doesn't always happen in one oil change. So you want to do two oil changes with OD, which is a 5,000 mile oil, because they developed for the manufacturers. Okay. Then you would move up to the XL, okay. which is the red cap. Yeah. And that's the one that, yeah, that's the one that lasts for a year. Which is that's extended okay. life. This is 10,000 yeah. miles. Jason has talked about the 25,000 mile oil. That's the gold one cap, signature series. That's the one. I don't let everybody into this, and I'll tell you why. Because as soon as some people, you put 25,000 mile oil in their motor and they go out driving, well now they forgot. They like to see that sticker. I got 20,000 miles more to go. Drive down the highway. There are other things that need to be looked at under that hood. Right. Yeah. I want to see the tire pressure. You know. Right. Like he says, your tire pressure is going to get low if you don't maintain it. The mileage is now out the window. So 10K is a good mileage interval that I like. 25. Rusty <laughs> passed was in and out so fast you can see him, but a black Cadillac, I've been servicing his car for 20 years, and he runs this oil in his Cadillac. He loves it because he can drive you know, so far into the change. But this, uh, the OE is a stepper oil, it's a 5,000, then you go to the 10. If you're really good and staying on top of this, I'll let you go to the 25. That's the thing about the 25. Just because you get to go to the 25,000 mile oil, that doesn't mean you can neglect the rest of the car. Right. You right. have 11 other fluids on. Yes. So if I put the OE in, do I have to wait 5,000 miles to put the second OE in and then wait 5,000 to step up yeah. in there? Yeah, yeah, just like a regular oil change. Okay. You want to get the use out of the oil. <coughs> well, not only do you get the use out of the oil and get the petroleum product out, that OE is clean. You're getting all, all your contaminants and stuff like that that build up in a motor. It helps, get, it helps get that out before you put the good synthetic in. So what are we looking at price-wise? The OE is a little more friendly than the XL. Let's see, this, you know, five quart complete pure Nissan that is five yeah. quarts. We're looking at about $75 for quarts. That's your part, labor, everything. Mm -hmm. The OE would be slightly less, I'm going to say 62 to 64 bucks. The OE oil there again is a 5,000 mile oil. Um, it's just not as big of a step for me, from three to five. I go straight to 10. And that works out because if I go to one of the cheaper oils, they're charging me $25. Well, on Ladies Day, I think, $20, right. 25 Right. So and if you have to do it twice point. every $3,000, that's an OE right there. You're still, you're still yeah. winning. Your motor's yeah. happy because it has a better oil in it. It's cleaning the inside, so it's happier. And you're spending less time in the weight room and spending less time yeah, in the car. That. The, reason, the biggest yeah. reason I was saying go to the OE twice is to help clean up the gum okay, and the contaminants out of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Because so if you put, if you, oh, you can jump to the XL right off the bat, but I, I recommend halfway through, change the filter. You know, he goes 10 at 5,000, come in and have him change the filter. Because it is going to dislodge a lot of your gum. It's, it's the, the detergent, just like your washing machine, okay? Uh -huh. yeah. The detergent's in here. Clean the motor. Clean the contaminants. It goes into your oil filter. Well, if, you're, if you've got stuff in there, you know it's cleaning it. Well, that's going to be putting those contaminants into that oil filter. The more contaminants you have, the more restrictions you have. If you change it, that's all you got to do is change the filter. Finish out the rest of your 10,000, you know, 5,000 miles. Then you change it all, and you don't have to worry about it as bad. And, and just to change the filter's minimal cost, we're talking 15, 20 bucks. Yeah. Okay. If you wanted to halfway through change the filter, that's a great idea. I mean, change the filter and add oil. Change the filter on top of the oil, and we're done. Yeah. And it's okay. that quick. I think I would oil first. Because as you were saying, as, as many miles as many miles as you have on yours, I, I'd be very tempted. Now I would go OE twice. Now if you if you got somebody that's Got a new, newer car, 
We've got less than 100,000 miles on it. Jump straight to the exit. Okay, so I have 93,000. Yeah. I can go to the exit. Go, go straight to the okay. XL, but once again, at 5,000 miles, come, change, back. come change. back and have them change your oil filter. Oh, okay. oh, just the oil Not filter. Oil filter. Uh -huh. Finish out your 10,000, then come back and change it all. Okay. And the only reason you're doing that is because it cleans so well. My truck right here, I bought it, it had 32,000 miles. I put synthetic in it the day I got it. I went 3,000 miles, I dropped the oil and put the synthetic in it. First time I changed it, I did not go with the 25,000. Alright, I went with the OE. And all it was was to clean it out. Like I said, mine's going to have a hard tank or whatever. Look, I need to call. Uh, I still start with the, um, the low grade first, clean it out, and then go to the 25. You can. Anything over 100,000 miles, I suggest the OE want the first go around for nothing else but the clean. Okay? The worst thing you can do is put the XL in, think you're going 10, 15,000 miles. Well, Seven or eight thousand miles, the oil light comes on, the oil filter's fucked up. And you've ruined the motor. My mother in law's car, that Toyota, they have done tests on it. That Toyota produces the most contaminants of any car on the road today in the United States. Just by the way it's made. I run the signature series on hers. Okay? 25,000 mile but because of that car doing what it does, we changed the oil filter twice in 25,000 miles, not in 10,000 miles. Just because of that. Now that that was before Anzo had a filter for that particular car. That filter is for just this Yes. Only back the oil. You have to run the Anzo oil filter because it okay. cleans filters so much better. Mm -hmm. um, now that they've got a filter for a car, one time. Yeah. This is any filter. That's a frame, that's a pure lighter, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Okay? Mm -hmm. I can take the cutter I have at home, cut it open, pull it out to you, and you'll see that the thing in it is paper. Like a car and that's what it uses for strength. All manufacturers that use that except Amzol. Amzol has actually got a woven mesh, like a cloth, that they make these out of. That's how they can go 25,000 miles on an oil change. Because not only does the oil cleanse, they've got the filter to catch it. There's no need to ride 25,000 miles. If you cannot catch the contaminants, that filter won't do its job for the last 20,000 miles. The filter's not designed to do that. The next time we have a car, ma'am? The next time we have a car, um, car, do they have uh, a car? No, not in that no, store. No, but they have off road trucks. They have boats, motorcycles. Yes. There's a picture of a truck over there doing some stuff, but they have jets, jets, boats. Jets, yeah. Uh, the they don't have NASCAR, I'm going to tell you why. 99% of the people in NASCAR are running Amzo gear oil, especially. Okay? But Amzo won't pay NASCAR to do that. And that's why, that's what NASCAR is about. If you see a, a, a Havilah sticker or a, a Valvoline, they're paying NASCAR. Well, see, another thing is, when all this started out with NASCAR, petroleum oil, okay? Petroleum people do not want Amzo oil. You know, think about it. <coughs> when, ne when Nextel first took over the, 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 the thing from Winston Cup, Richard Childress went out and got AT&T. 
Penske had Altair. Well, Nextel had a duck fit and ended up suing them. And the Supreme Court said there was nothing they could do. But at the end of the contract, they didn't. They could not redo it. That's why Altel is no longer in NASCAR. And uh, at and is no longer in NASCAR. Because now you have, their sponsorships have to sign a contract with the company, with NASCAR. If you hear something that says uh, NASCAR, the official brand of NASCAR, mm -hmm. okay, NASCAR has come up to them and said, okay, Goodyear tires. They've come up to Goodyear and they said, you know what, to be the official tire of NASCAR, you can put it on everything you get. Cost you $1.2 million. Uh, more than that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but it doesn't mean it's the best product. No, it does not. They're buying. They're buying they advertising. Endorsement. Yes. Endorsement. Endorsement. Yes. They're buying. That's exactly so right. So it's not necessarily. Um, it's a big lie. The, the, the Amsoil started up north. It started out with their snowmobiles, their songs. They've been into motorcycles, snowmobiles, and boats for years. For years. Believe it or not, Amsoil was made before Lucas ever thought about getting it. Everybody's heard of Lucas Oil. Well, Lucas, he copied a lot of it, basically, yes. what he does. One, part of that is because Amsoil had all the patents on this. Once the patents go, then other people can buy it. Yeah. I mean, let's see here if I can find it real quick. Also, I just want to mention about these products. It says 10,000 miles, right? It says it right on the label. The lawyers wouldn't let them do that if the product wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And it says it. He said 25,000. It's on it. It says it on the label. Up to 25,000 miles or one year, whichever comes first. The personal vehicle is not operated under severe service. Severe service, it goes 15,000 miles or one year. But I mean, it's, it's on the label on the When they say severe service, what they mean is like your postman, stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. Police cars, and you will be surprised how many police cars, including the city of Columbia, got more than one in their engines which is a synthetic for that very reason. But the reason they won't transfer over to Amgo is because somebody's giving it to them at such a low, low price. I service uh, Columbia College Police Department vehicles. I tried to get them to go to Amgo. No, I can't do that. Regular oil. It's okay. Well, their cars don't get high miles. They drive around the campus. Right. Yeah. It's amazing that this campus has 12 cars. I couldn't believe the police department had to be that big. I have girls, all girls here, y'all have no But uh, we service their cars and they bring them in every 3,000. They just have to stay with that oil. But because they are a new municipality, they get special deals. Like Goodyear tires. They, I get uh, Goodyear tires for them delivered here, but they get the bill. They're actually paying less for the tires than I pay. Because they are the municipality, they are protecting a cop, the right. police. They'll get the tire for eighty dollars if I call the same place and order tires for me for another customer. It'll cost me one hundred twenty dollars because they have a deal. But they're they're good people. I do have a, a question um, regarding the oil change. Now, well, actually, it's not. It's twofold. I usually have owned high mileage vehicles. So is there with the Amsoil, is there really a difference now with the regular oil versus high mileage? Because I was always, the high mileage was always higher to get the oil change. So is there a difference now with this particular oil no. versus the XL? And, okay. So when, it does when you say high mileage, I just want to make sure your question, I answer it right. You're saying your car has high mileage on it, it's not that you want to put this oil in and drive a no. longer distance. Right, it has high mileage. It's high mileage. Somebody started that. I think Mattis is on. They talk about it. I think I sit in their waiting room sometimes and they say, the 
customer, do you want the extended, you know, the extended, they, 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 they well, it's $20 more. It's an additive in the oil, right? That's all it is. It's an additive in the oil. It's already in it. <laughs> With, with the mileage for right right now, I normally, you know, 3,000 to 3,500 miles. If you go over that, what is the safe amount of miles that you can kind of get away with before you change change oil? Conventional oil? Conventional oil? You already went over three. I'm a little bit over 3,500. It depends on what kind of driving you're doing. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. 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 If you go 4,000, you push your luck. Now, if you're like my father and I, we do a lot of interstate driving. Okay, we go five to seven. And that's because driving down the interstate is actually easier than sitting at a red light. Every part of the car is easier on the tires, the, the, the oil, everything. It's easier on your vehicle to ride down the interstate than it is. Stop and go, stop and go. My Uncle Jim drives up and down the highway every day fixing automatic doors for grocery stores. Savannah, one day, next day he's in Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. He's got a 2012 Ford van showing 98,000 miles on it. Wow. He's got the original set of tires on the trucks. Wow. And they look good. He raves about it every time it comes from oil. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I want in the front, I want 55. In the back, I want 70. And rides good. <laughs> He's the man spending four, five, six hours a day in this van. He knows what he wants. Yes, sir. I'll do my head. Now, now, with the flex fuel, okay, I have a vehicle now that has the flex fuel. I do notice that I get better mileage if I'm on the interstate than just around. Is that normal or does that well, have anything to do? I got a question for you. Mileage is based on distance, correct? Right. A mile. Well, if you're sitting at a red light or stop sign, you're burning fuel and you're not moving. That's how you get better gas mileage going down the interstate. That, and once again, it's easier on the vehicle. Because sitting at a red light, your temperatures go up because they don't have the air being pulled through the radiators and the coolers. Temperatures go up. Petroleum Petroleum oil break down. Regular motor oil or race motors. You hit 280 to 300, forget it. You don't wipe out a set of bearings. Ann's oil, I run 350 degrees, take the oil pan off of it, look at it, and put it right back up. All because I <laughs> I run the carburetor a little lean that night. <laughs> And oh, oh yeah, she was fine. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. the light come on, and I'm like, something's got to be wrong. This oil will never run hot, you know. And I looked at it, and he said, "Are you okay?" And before the end of that night, it was 350 degrees when I pulled it into the pits. That, that is hot. Hot. That is extremely hot. I mean, the water was right at 220, and that's our max on water. That the only reason I stayed running is it didn't pop over to. If it would have got 225. I brought her in. All I did was change the oil. I looked at the camp, uh, raw bearings, perfect. I looked at the mains, perfect. Change the jets in the carburetor, come right back down where it belongs. You, if I'd have done that with a petroleum oil, I'd have been buying a motor because I'd have rods coming out the side of it. AMS oil lubricates and protects so much better than petroleum. Your regular oil. Okay? Petroleum oil is handling a lot of your cast rolls. Until you get, and a lot of people call synthetic oils, you look at them and read the fine print, they're what they call parasynthetic. They're a mixture of petroleum and synthetics. I believe them. Blend. AMS oil is pure 100% synthetic. That means man made. We can actually control the viscosities better, we can control the lubricant.
lubrication properties better. We can control the detergent properties better. You can't control Mother Nature. We all know that. And that's what petroleum will make Mother Nature. Jason, appreciate you. I guess next month I'm going. I know, I'll be coming in. <laughs>